Well, this morning, I'm out here to attempt another waterfowl hunt. Today, we're actually hunting private property. That's something very new to me. If you guys followed the channel for a long time, you guys know that all of my hunts occur on public land. And so right now we're getting our decoys. We're trying to get our decoys to the spot where we want to set up and hopefully we can smack some waterfowl. Where did he go? Yeah, he's over on the far side. Oh. Make sure you don't go anywhere. Oh, he got him. <laughs> that, Man, that thing is a little far out there. <laughs> Look at all the ducks getting up down the way. You got jam again? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Dude. You need to get some oil on that thing. It's like brand new. <laughs> Who got him? I did. Yeah. I got that one. I, well, I dropped that one. You got two? Nice. So I haven't been vlogging much because I've been just uh, trying to learn as much as I can from the two pros that I'm out here with today. We've been working a lot of flocks of goose or geese and just a lot of mishaps. So we finally connected on a flock. They came in. Hopefully the GoPro got good footage of that and then drop three of them so that's the first successful uh, flock of geese that we've put down it's awesome this is pretty much our spread of decoys here and then these little like pits that's what we're just like hunkered down in and then once they come over and they're within range we just stand up and just or just get up and shoot them
leave these ducks, leave them. Hold still. Take him, take him. Feathers come down. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Shoot that one. Who shot that? Who shot? You better kill him. Oh, he's dead. Good shot, Byron. I didn't even see that one fall. I mean, neither. Nice. You better hit. You didn't like that one? You dropped that one, I went to the second one, hit the second one, seen feathers. Same here. Then I come over here to your guys's. I know. <laughs> I seen, seen that one that sailed. Did yours so, come from this direction? Yeah. There oh, was, he was oh really? Oh. No, there was 20 of them. That, that whole group came back and came this yeah, way. Yeah, whole group circled. Oh, you shot that here. flock? Really? Yeah. This group, oh. This group. I yeah, they, they were both converging right oh. over there. Oh. He's lower? No, they were all the same way. Oh. I didn't even know that flock was behind us. We're looking that way, and he was coming. They're coming back this way. Oh! I could hear them behind us. I'm like, oh, they're behind us. Yeah. Here they come. And all of a sudden, you guys are shooting. I was just so focused on this flock. Not then. Man. <laughs> All right, well, today we are switching up our plans. Just earlier today, Byron and I, we went out for a morning duck hunt, but we didn't shoot anything, so we came back. We are gonna load up the boat here shortly, and then we're gonna drive over to the river and see if we can go and smack some walleyes and perhaps some trophy rainbow trout and so today we're just uh targeting big fish big walleyes big rainbows maybe if we get lucky big burbits and so yeah that's pretty much what we're gonna do today it is cold way cold up here so as you guys can see i'm like all puffed up i'm wearing a bib on top of my fleece lined pants and then i have a long sleeve for my base layer i have one of my kuyu insulation jackets and then I just have this thin mid fleece, mid layer fleece, mossy oak over that. And then I have this insulation jacket on top of all those. And then I put my bib over all those pieces right there just to help retain heat a little bit better. And I'm just wrapping everything over with my big, bad, sick of gear puffy jacket. That and then just beanie and just a neck gaiter to stay warm. And then I just have I have some gloves in the truck right now. Those are my big waterproof Badlands gloves, but you now just little glove slash mitten for my hands. But with that being said, we're just gearing up right now. Just came back. And so off to the river we go and hopefully we can smack some fish. All right, so we got everything loaded up and we're out here on the water. And right now we're just trolling for some trout. So I'm just gonna quickly run down what we've got going on. We've got our rod holders, and then we've got our rods. And then for our rig, we're just using some planer boards to um, basically help us detect a fish bite. And then about like 80 or 100 feet behind those planer boards is where our crankbaits are. And for 
the crankbaits they're only diving about I don't know anywhere from four to ten feet because these trout they're they're pretty shallow this time of year and then we're just trolling around we're just trying to see if we can get lucky here and uh, drive past a trout that wants to play along Got him. Nice and slow. All right, nice and slow. Um, ben, kick that neutral. Okay. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Want me to back up while I'm yeah, doing I'm this? Backing up. All right. They're up. No, that's reverse. Push the button. There you go. Nice and slow. All right. Oh yeah, he's on there. I can feel the weight. Oh yeah, I don't feel him anymore. Oh yeah, he's on there. Where do you want to land him? Right here. Right, right, right there. there. All right. Oh, this oh. one. I forgot my extension. It's on my handle. Oh yeah, he's fighting. He's not a big one. He's not a big one, but hey, it's a start. Hey, there we go. That's still a nice one. Hey, we broke the ice. Yeah, we did. It's like a good, what, 18, 19? Hey, you're right on. A one fish every hour? My GoPro's been running for an hour. <laughs> Heck yeah. Is that a, ha a wild or a hatchery? Oh, hatchery. Yeah. He doesn't have the adipose fin. Yeah. Sweet. That's a hatchery. Well, we took one hour. We're just running a bunch of planer boards on both sides of the boat, trolling. First one, 17 and a half inches, hatchery trout, so it's keepable. We're just gonna keep doing this until we run out of time. Hopefully we can land like a 25 incher. That'd be cool, but we'll see. Swapping lures for the gold perch color because that's what they're hitting right now. This one? Yeah. All right. Oh, oh. oh, it's slippery. Yeah, there's a... There's a coating on it? There's probably some of our stuff we use. Go around this point, we'll turn, and we'll come right back through this. Because yeah. we've had two good hits already. Yeah. All hooked up, there you go. Yep, that one's all good to go. Right. Heads. I mean, that was exciting. That was pretty cool to watch. I, I can't even imagine what you just told me. Oh, oh, already on. Nice. Dang, that, that perch color is money right now. Yep, that perch. Oh, no, you, go ahead, Ben. We just threw that one out, like, two minutes, if even. How does he feel, Ben? He's bigger than the last one. Yeah? He's coming in pretty easy. Oh. Well. Hey, it's still a fish. Yep, that's a fish. Yes, sir. Man, that's crazy how you're just switching up a color. It's just, just bang, bang, bang. Well, there is one clean goose breast for me to eat this afternoon. Uh, you guys didn't see me clean this because Byron actually was the one that took charge and cleaned all the goose. But right now we're just going to do something very simple. We're just going to season it with this chipotle roasted garlic seasoning. We're just going to season it and then we're just going to put it in some Louisiana fish fry. And then we're just going to fry it up. This is my first time doing goose breast like this, so 
we'll see how it turns out. It's just trying something new. Just something like that. Well, I should have brought a Ziploc bag for this, but since we don't have it, we're just gonna improvise here. So we're just gonna kind of do like a deep fried, not even deep fried, just fried chicken steak, but instead of chicken, we're using goose. It's such a pain without a Ziploc bag here, as you guys can see, but life's all about improvising, so we're good. All right, so we just got done uh, doing my goose breast and prepping it. This is my olive oil. As you guys can see, it's not in the smooth liquid oil form because I left this in my car and up here it's been getting below freezing. And so I'm, I've been trying to thaw it out and right now it's all right, but as long as it's willing to get out of the bottle and we can put it on a frying pan, I'm all right with it. But with that being said, we're gonna turn on our dual stove here that my subscriber bought and sent me. You can hear the gasoline come out. Turns on. Just gotta put our grate back on here. Should have brought a bigger frying pan, but as the meat cooks, it will actually shrink. So we should be all right here. So I have to cut it because the piece of breast is too thick for my little frying pan. So we're just gonna cut it. I mean, I can always wait, but I don't have a lot of time, so. Well folks, there you have it. Just a pretty simple lunch for me today. I don't eat goose a lot just because I haven't hunted them a lot, but um, I think it's only right to try a piece of goose meat first because that's kind of what this video is all about because I don't goose hunt a lot. And so I was hoping to have just a big old piece of goose meat, but I didn't want to wait that long to let it cook. So that being said, let's try this. relatively tender that chipotle roasted garlic seasoning dang that is good holy crap now for the goose meat itself it's it's relatively tender you know like i'm not struggling to break it apart but the flavor of the goose is very mild there's no gaminess to it at all it kind of just reminds me of deer meat to be honest See, just relatively tender. You know, it's not dry or anything. It's actually quite moist, so I guess that would be a big difference between goose and deer meat. Because typically, if you cook deer meat to this type of rareness, it is a little bit more on the drier side, but this, not dry at all. Very moist. I can even see moisture inside of the meat. Now it's just a little bit of side dish potato salad. Whenever you're eating goose, duck, or turkey, or anything that you shoot with a shotgun, always look out for BBs or pellets because you don't want to break a tooth because you accidentally bit a pellet or a BB. So always keep that in mind. Uh, this one, I made sure there was none. So, you know, just shout out.